and I'm going to discuss the anatomy of the skull bone. Anatomy of the skull. So um, the skull has three parts. You have the visceral cranium where the face is located, the neurocranium which is on top, and chondrocranium that forms the base of the skull. So the neurocranium forms by intramembranous ossification, while the chondrocranium forms by endochondral ossification. Remember we said intramembranous ossification is whereby you form um, bone directly from mesenchymal cells, while endochondral ossification, you form bone from a pre-existing hyaline cartilage. Okay, so um, we have 22 bones, 8 form the cranium and 14 are in the face. Then you have other 7 bones that are associated with the skull and this include the ossicles in the ear, including the malleus, incus and the steps. Then we also have the hyoid bone in the neck. So the visceral cranium where the face is located, yeah? You have bones of the forehead, bones of the orbits, bones in, that form boundaries of the nasal cavity, and the upper and the lower jaw. So this is what we call the visceral cranium. You have your frontal bones here. This is the nasal bone. This is the maxilla, mandible, your zygomatic bone. Okay. This is part of the cranium. So this is temporal bone. So frontal nasal bone maxilla maxilla begins here so this is frontal process of maxilla so this is maxilla mandibular bone zygomatic bone we have other small bones which you need to know okay so this is lacrimal bone in the nose you have the concha we have superior middle and inferior concha this is the nasal septum which anteriorly is usually cartilaginous and posteriorly is formed by two bones the perpendicular plate of ethmoid and the vomer. okay so those form the nasal septum so the frontal bone you have superciliary arches these are two raised bony ridges and there's a glabella that are depression between the two superciliary arches we have a supraorbital foramen these are holes above the orbit and a zygomatic process that articulates with the frontal process of zygomatic bone okay so this shows you the frontal bone this is the zygomatic process the supraorbital line that's the glabella in between the two supraorbital um, margins this is your supraorbital foramen this is the orbital plate or frontal bone that forms the roof of the orbit okay and then we get to the um, other bones you have two so the on the face you have two maxilla two lacrimal bones two nasal two zygomatic bone but one mandible and this facial bones the main function is to serve as attachment for muscles of facial expression and also uh, muscles of mastication so again um, frontal maxillary mandibular zygomatic perpendicular plate of ethmoid that's a vomer the lacrimal okay these are the concha in the nose and so on and so forth zygomatic bone are uh, lateral and inferior they form the lateral and inferior rim of the orbit then the nasal bones articulate with each other as well as with the frontal bone and also with the frontal process of the maxilla the maxilla contributes to the inferior margin of the orbit and they contain alveolar processes that house the teeth of the upper jaw so this is the maxilla this is the flow of the orbit so it forms the orbital it has an orbital surface it, okay then these are the alveolar processes that are housing the teeth it has a frontal process articulating with frontal bone and a zygomatic process articulating with zygomatic bone so um that's the lacrimal bone that's the nasal bone the mandible has a body ramus and an angle the angle of the mandible is where the body and the ramus meet the body is anteriorly the ramus is posteriorly so this is the body of the mandible and this is the ramus posteriorly so where the body and the ramus meet that's the angle then this is the mandibular notch that's the condylar process 
and that's the coronoid process. So the ramus, the body, the angle, that's the mental foramen, condylar process, mandibular notch coronoid. You're supposed to know all these parts of these bones. So that's your mandibular foramen for inf um, inferior alveolar nerve, which is a division of mandibular nerve. Okay, and that's your um, that's the angle there, and this is usually the uh, body. And that's the ramus from the outer part. So the deeper facial bones include palatine, ethmoid, the concha in the nose, and the vomer. And these deeper facial bones they help to um, separate the nasal and the oral cavity. For example, the palatine bones will help to separate nasal cavity from oral cavity. Then the concha increase the surface area in the nasal cavity, and the vomer and perpendicular plate of ethmoid will help to form the um, bony part of the nasal septum. So this is a perpendicular plate here. Then the ethmoid bone also has the crystal galley at that portion. So this is the crystal galley, this is the perpendicular plate. And the ethmoid bone houses the ethmoid sinus and also forms part of the middle nasal concha. So basically those are the parts of the um, ethmoid bone. This shows you parts of the zygomatic bone, frontal process that articulate with the frontal bone, temporal process. Okay. That's your frontal bone, nasal bone. This is a sphenoid. The sphenoid usually houses the sphenoid sinus here and it has a cellar tosica that houses the pituitary gland. These are the concha of the nose, superior, middle, and inferior. This is your maxilla. This is the palatine processes of the maxilla. So we have foramina which are holes in bones. So supraorbital foramen for supraorbital neurovascular structures, infraorbital for infraorbital neurovascular structures, mental foramen for mental foramen. Um, so these are from ophthalmic nerves. These are from maxillary and mental are from mandibular. So this is your supraorbital foramen, infraorbital foramina, and you have your mental foramina down here. This um, section just shows you parts of the different squamous part of frontal, the orbital surface. This is the greater wing of sphenoid. This is the squamous part of temporal. Um, sorry, this is parietal. This is squamous part of temporal. This is the zygomatic arc made up of the temporal process of zygomatic and zygomatic process of temporal. So uh, temporal has a zygomatic process, it has a mastoid, it has a styloid, a squamous part, and there's a petrous part inside. This is the occipital bone, okay? Maxillary, mandibular, this is the condyle and the coronoid process, notch, ramus, body, and the angle. So we have eight cranial bones, occipital, frontal, sphenoid, ethmoid, two parietal, and two temporal bones. So one frontal separated from the parietals by coronal suture, the two parietals separated by sagittal suture, and the two parietals separated from occipital bone by lambdoid suture. The occipital bone has landmarks. We have external occipital protuberance, occipital condyles, superior and inferior nuchal lines. So you can appreciate the occipital condyles here when you turn it upside down. These are the condyles on the side of the foramen magnum. Then you have superior nuchal line, inferior nuchal lines, external occipital protuberance. The parietal bones have superior and in, uh, inferior temporal lines. The temporal bone has different parts. You have the squamous part, zygomatic process, tympanic part that houses the external auditory meatus, and the petrous part. Then it has two processes, the mastoid and the styloid process. So if you have to look here, this is the zygomatic process. This is the squamous part, mastoid, styloid, tympanic with external auditory meatus. And um, in the internal part, there's a petrous part of temporal bone, which is not visible here. Then this just shows you the superior and inferior temporal lines of the parietal bone. This shows you the parts of the frontal bone, which we have already discussed. Then we go to the sphenoid. It has a body, 
it has butterfly wings like structure which we call the greater and lesser wings and it also has the pterygoid processes too medial and lateral pterygoid processes that are separated by the pterygoid fossa so this is the butterfly uh, structure so this whole thing is a sphenoid bone you have the it's a, a superior orbital fissure here that separates the lesser wing from greater wing so this fissure this space here is a superior orbital fissure so anything above is lesser wing this below is greater wing and this is the cellular tussica where the pituitary gland sits you have foramen ovale for mandibular nerve okay and then you have your pterygoid clits lateral and medial and they're separated by a pterygoid fossa remember the body of sphenoid is what houses the sphenoid sinus so you can appreciate the greater wing here lesser wing superior orbital fissure so all these foramina and fissure you need to know the contents like foramen ovale has mandibular nerve accessory meningeal artery lesser petrosal nerve emissary veins superior orbital has cranial nerves to the orbit such as of oculomotor abducens trochlear then you have ophthalmic veins and so on and so forth so this is the internal parts of the skull so this is what we call the um petrous part of the temporal bone okay this is the anterior cranial fossa the middle cranial fossa and the posterior cranial fossa so this is what forms the base of the skull frontal sinuses are housed here lesser wing of sphenoid greater wing of sphenoid superior orbital fissure this is the cellar to seeker for pituitary glands okay this foramen magnum the occipital bone this we have already talked about frontal parietal occipital sagittal suture coronal suture and the lambdoid suture so lambdoid suture separates occipital from the two parietal and these sutures are just fibrous joints yeah coronal suture separates frontal from the two parietal sagittal separates um the two parietal bones and the squamous um, suture separates the parietal from the temporal bone where the um, coronal and sagittal meet that's the bregma which is the site for the anterior frontanel where coronal and sagittal meet this is the bregma anterior frontanel is located and this is the lambda where sagittal and lambdoid suture meet so that's the location of the posterior frontanel that's the bregma and that's the lambda so remember the posterior frontanel closes earlier than the anterior frontanel in children then we have uh, paranasal air sinuses that are housed the mucosal lined air field spaces air field spaces within the skull bones that are lined by mucosa so we have one uh, in each frontal bone so frontal sinus in the maxillary bone maxillary sinus in the sphenoid bone sphenoid sinus and in the ethmoid bone you have your ethmoid sinuses so they help to make the skull lighter and they give the voice some resonance and remember they are lined by mucous membranes so they produce mucus that helps to moisten and clean the air so that's your um, sphenoid sinus there that's the um, frontal sinus then the ethmoid sinuses are located around here in the ethmoid bone and maxillary sinuses in the uh, maxilla so the flow of the cranial cavity as we have seen is divided into anterior cranial fossa the middle cranial fossa and the posterior cranial fossa posterior to the petrous part of the temporal bone so middle portion is from the lesser wing of sphenoid anteriorly to petrous part of temporal bone so the chondrocranium has uh, the base of the skull basically and um, you have anterior part with the teeth and hard palate and the middle part you have the hard palate and anterior margin of the foramen magnum while posterior part you have the anterior edge of foramen magnum to the superior nuchal lines so palate here then you have the foramen magnum is here to the occipital bone and its nuchal lines and external protuberance so that forms the chondro cranium or the base of the skull okay so you just have to pause and learn all these um, labeled parts okay like here now you have the palate is made up of palatine processes of the maxillary bone and horizontal plates of the palatine bone these are the medial and lateral pterygoid plates of the sphenoid bone and in between you have your pterygoid fossa so you have to pause here and learn all the foramina that are on the skull
on which bone are they housed and what structures pass through them. So this is very, very 